dribble for the first time and down he goes. Finiello. Oh, he starts to get to it. And he's down. There's a good right hand shout in instructions and again making fundamental mistakes. Right hand, he stops it. Sam Midge No! London and welcome to the Fight Week press conference ahead of an absolute cracker this Friday night live on TNT Sports from York Hall. It's a multi-title fight card at British Boxing Spiritual Home and we were there just last week in the lightweight division as Mark Chamberlain had a thrilling fight with Archon Ramblabs and has scored a last round knockout and we're expecting plenty of fireworks this Friday night. Co-main events again in the lightweight division. We've got Gavin Gwynn, the British lightweight champion, the man now very much top of his game. He is challenging for the European lightweight championship against an enigma, a 47-year-old but unbeaten Emiliano Marsili. And in co-main event status, we've got the return of Sam Noakes, 100% knockout rate. The WBC international silver lightweight champion takes on Carlos Perez. And looking around at this top table, there are four title fights on this show and some of the best talent in the country and probably some of the best talent in the world. We're going to start with a young man, a teenager, Royston Barney Smith uh, in the super featherweight division. Royston, this is actually it's your last fight as a teenager. You're getting a bit old. Yeah, for sure, Dev. Um, I'm becoming into a young man now and... Uh... If it feels good to be getting a bit older, a bit wiser, a bit stronger, and um, looking to make a statement on Friday night. You, you're taking on Michael uh, Velasco. It's another sort of tough South American kind of guy. These are really learning fights, aren't they? Yeah, for sure, Dev. Like um, I take every fight very serious, but um, on Friday night it's going to be a demolition job, like everyone wants to see, and I'm going to prove what I'm all about. Well, he's taken good fighters the distance. Kurt Walker, uh, he's took him the distance. You've just said you're going to do a demolition job, so it's on your mind to do better than other guys. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm not here to to make up the numbers. I, I'm here to be number one, and um, that's what I strive to be. And uh, hopefully, I can do that. You're in that Ben Davison camp as well. Uh, a recent addition to that camp is, of course, Anthony Joshua. How's that been? It's been good, Dev. Um, seeing him come in the gym, watch the way he trains and uh, just taking things away from him, like the way he warms up. He takes uh, like 45 minutes every day just to warm up before he even does anything. And uh, just watching the way he goes through the gears and um, just just picking up a lot of him and um, trying trying to copy him and and what he did. Not going to spar him, are you? I oh, know he's a bit big for me, yeah. but <laughs> he's about the same sort of size as you. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Royston. Um, just, just quickly, um, are we expecting a title fight for you soon? I mean, this this will be uh, this will be your eighth fight. It feels like we're moving in in the right direction. Have you had a sort of chat with Frank about what's gonna what's gonna happen here? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, in early part of twenty twenty four, that's when I want to start pushing for for titles, and um, hopefully I can make that happen. But on Friday night, I need to get past him first, not leaving no stones untanned, and uh, gonna produce the goods like always. OK, thank you, Royston Barney-Smith. We look forward to it. Uh, let's speak to the fighters involved in one of the four title fights. We've got a WBO European Super Bantamweight title on the line as Brad Strand, unbeaten Brad Strand, takes on Joshua John from Wales, one of two Welshmen on this card. I'm, I'm going to start with you, uh, Joshua John. Uh, big chance for yourself on a big platform to 
to win a title. Tell us how you're feeling. Yeah, it's a massive uh, chance for me. Um, I'm feeling great, confident. I'm really blessed to be here, to be, to be fair, Dev. Um, yeah, I'm just happy overall. And I just can't wait to pull a show on Friday night. And I've seen some of your interviews after your, your recent fights and you were talking about how you are ready for a title now. I think you were talking about maybe even the, the British title was the one that I saw, but this this is it. You can become the WBO European champion, a tremendous ranking belt. It, it means a lot, right? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we was on about uh, going down to Bantamweight for the British title as well. You know, the plan was, but obviously um, we had a phone call in for this WBO title. Uh, so, yeah, we, we took his fight instead. So, yeah, win Friday and we can uh, look at the British title in, maybe at uh, Bantamweight or maybe at Super Bantam. I was looking on BoxRec and uh, Brad Strand is ranked one place above you. Is that fair? What do you think? Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fair. But, you know, after Friday night, it's going to change. What do, you, what do you think of Brad Strand? Um, I don't know much about Brad. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about him at all, to be fair. But that doesn't matter. Brad, anything you want to tell uh, Joshua John about you? He doesn't seem to know a lot about you. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, what do you want to know about me, Dev? <laughs> I mean, what does Joshua John need to know about Brad Stan? What does he need to be worried about on Friday night? Just know I'm ready, that's all, really. I don't need to be worried about anything. I'm not telling you to worry, am I? No worry, not at all. Sweet. OK, neither fighter is worried about each, each other, but Brad, I mean, first title fight for you, you've been kind of simmering away. Nick Ball has kind of led the charge from your gym. It's a great time in your gym at the moment, and this is now your chance. Yeah, Defo, Dev, obviously. Nick showed us how, how it's done in um, first title fight, and uh, hopefully the first of many for me. And what do you think of Joshua John here? Don't even know him, you know, Dev, so I uh, can't really give you an opinion on him, even though you want me to. I would love you to. I, I, would, I, I thought maybe you'd know something about him, but... Um, nah, I don't know much about him, lad, to be honest. It's a brilliant division. Obviously, Liam Davis is, uh, is, is the man. He's the British and the European champion uh, that you're in right now. You know, there's so many others, Dennis McCann and, you know, guys like that. A uh, chance for you to make a statement, though, on, on Friday. Yeah, defo. Uh, get, get a win on Friday and then push on to some... Uh, Big fights in 2024. As you said, there, there's a few names, few big fights at Super Bantam, so no, I'm looking forward to it. Liam Davis in particular is a guy that you've had your eye on for some time. I understand there's a bit of amateur background there. Yeah, beat him twice in the amateurs, but obviously, to be fair to him, he's flying at the minute in the pros. I'd love that fight, but probably a few fights away from me in it, so uh, just keep winning and I'll get him one day. OK, well, you and Joshua John seem very uh, chatty amongst yourselves. Anything you just want to say to him as a, as a final sort of message? Nah, I just see you on Friday, innit? Uh, Joshua, your response? Yeah, see you Friday, Brad. <laughs> there you go, two fighters that will see each other most certainly on Friday. WBO European Super Bantamweight Championship on the line. And actually, yes, uh, Gavin Gwynn's just pointed out you will see each other tomorrow, tomorrow at the yeah. Wayne oh, as yeah. well. So <laughs> you're on Thursday. I'm sure there will be... Nice one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there, there will be plenty of chat. Uh, let's keep things moving. Let's... There is a, uh, a wonderful WBC International Featherweight Championship fight here between Raven Chapman and Lucy Sedlikova. Uh, Lucy, great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Let's start with yourself. This is your, uh, your 18th fight. You're a former... Youth World Champion, uh, you've had some great accomplishments in your career. Tell us how you're feeling about this fight. Hello, um, yes, uh, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very excited for this fight and I'm looking forward. What do you think about Raven Chapman? She, she's unbeaten so far, she looks pretty good to us. What, what do you think? Um, I think she's a very good athlete, she's a good uh, boxer, she's tough, she has good technique. Um, I think it will be a great fight. How will you beat her? It's a secret. It's a secret? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's bring in Raven Chapman. Um, this is your third defence now of, of this WBC international title that you have. Um, tough and game opponent who has a secret on how to beat you. Give us your thoughts. Yeah, obviously... Me and Lucy were meant to fight before, so it's nice that we get to put, put on a show this time. Um, I was looking forward to fighting her before. Unfortunately, she, she was ill, so I'm glad we've got to do the match. And like you say, Lucy's had um, 
good experience. She's been a former youth world champion, so it's another step up for me. And and I look forward to Friday, and I'll expect the best version of Lucy uh, on Friday night. What sort of fight are you um, actually expecting from her? She's only lost in in very good company. I just expect the best version of Lucy. I'm sure she's going to be game and here, here to win, here to take the belt home with her. So it's going to be a good fight. We're going to put on a show for the fans, but I'll expect the best of her and she needs to expect the best of me. And, and Lucy, what, what are your ambitions here? You've been a youth world champion. Is it very much to become a, a full sort of world champion coming through Raven Chapman on Friday? Uh, yes, sure. That's the plan. <laughs> that, that is the plan. Um, <laughs> Raven, you uh, you have that WBC title, of course, and we've just seen Sky Nicholson. She's got a belt with the WBC as well. Obviously, you both want Amanda Serrano, but there may well be a scenario where you have to fight each other. Is is that something that you're thinking about a little bit? Yeah, obviously, uh, I know Sky, and we we've always sort of known we're on a collision course at some point, um, and whether that's both of us to get our way to that world title, then then so be it. Obviously. If it happens, it happens for that. If it's not for an eliminator, it'll be for the world title, I'm sure. And how do you see this fight going on Friday? I see it going... I see it being an exciting fight. I know Lucy's very game and up for it. Um, but, yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we're going to put on a show. It's going to be a good fight, and I'm going to come away with that win and take that belt home still. Thank you very much, Raven. Thank you, Lucy. The secret will be out on Friday. We look forward to it. Let's bring in another teenager. Tip by many. I know you love a press conference, Moses. Tip by many to be the future of the heavyweight division. And uh, look, so many great fighters, Moses Atama. So many great fighters have boxed at York Hall. Uh, AJ's boxed there. Tyson Fury, Lennox Lewis. And now this is you going to tick that box. Thoughts? Yeah, literally, like my SNC coach, he always did say that you can't be a British fighter and not fight at the York Hall. So, like you said, it, it's it's good to get that ticked off the box. You were at the, uh, you were on the Fury and Garnet show, the Battle of the Baddest. It was quite the week out there. Uh, what did you take from that week? No, it was good. It was a good experience. Um, obviously, I I did put on a good performance. I do believe. Um, yeah, it's first my first time boxing outside. Not only that, boxing outside. Um, outside of Europe, so um, I guess it's, uh, it, was, it was a new experience and obviously rubbing shoulders with one of the, or the greatest of, the, of boxing, so yeah. Not just rubbing shoulders though, Moses, you actually had a little chat with, with Mike Tyson, he was giving you advice, you were talking about, like, I think he said to you, there's no such thing as bums and stuff like that, quite a moment. Yeah, it was. It was. Listen, like I said, he's one of the greatest to put to put a pair of gloves on. So it was. It was obviously nice to talk to him. Obviously, get his uh, get his advice on some of on my career or, or whatnot. And um, and yeah, like obviously you have bums in boxing. Like obviously, I ain't got to explain myself. Some some fights should go in, and obviously it's a it's a one round knockout job. And uh, I don't think anyone really wants to see that. People obviously come to pay their money to watch big big fight so um obviously I want to be the man to put that to put them fights on well, from your career so far you either knock someone out in the first round or, or it goes the six the six rounds what, what are you expecting on Friday I don't really know what I'm expecting I don't even know what I'm fighting <laughs> <laughs> well let's hope there is some clarity on that very very shortly um another thing I just wanted to ask you you are a right Handed Southpaw. Oh, you told everyone my secret. No, but you, no, you said it in your. No, but no, you said it. You said it in the <laughs> post fight. My secret. Um, tell, tell us about that. What? How, how did that come about? Um, I don't know. Being in the amateurs, I feel like a lot of fighters are. Um, obviously, I right in the Southpaw. I'm gonna tell Royston secret. He's a right handed Southpaw as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I, me and Royston were obviously on the England team. Obviously, boxed in Germany, boxed in Bulgaria, or boxed in Romania together. So obviously, he can tell you as well that in amateur boxing, a lot of a lot of boxers are right-handed southpaws. And when I first walked down the gym at St Mary's, my coach said throw two punches on the bags, and the first stance I went into was a southpaw. So obviously, that's that's the stance I'm, I've obviously occupied. Have you got the call yet from Tyson Fury to go and help him for? Preparation? No, I haven't, but obviously I'll be expecting that soon. 
Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Moses Itama. Sorry to give away the secret, which you've already said in countless interviews. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, let's bring in uh, look, the WBC International Silver Lightweight title is on the line between Sam Noakes, defending his crown against Carlos Perez here. And we'll start with Carlos Perez. Um, this is your 29th fight, Carlos. Uh, we've got Benny Checker doing some translation here. Uh, t tell us how you're feeling about this fight and, and Sam Noakes here. Bueno, la verdad que me siento muy fuerte. Hemos hecho 12 semanas de preparación y bueno, vengo increíble. He says uh, he's really pleased to be here and, and he has done about 12 rounds, uh, sorry, 12 weeks of preparation for this fight. Uh, he's ready for it. And what does he think of Sam Noakes? This is a man with a 100% knockout rate, seems to hit very, very hard. What, what does Carlos Perez think? Dice que piensa de que el que tiene un récord de 100% de nocaut. Dile que yo a mí me gustan los retos difíciles y bueno para mí Sam No es un reto difícil y me encanta esos retos. He says he likes those challengers, you know, those challenge for him. So it's a challenge, it's a, it's a risk, but he's taking, but he's, he's looking forward to it. Does he think he can take the power? Dice que tú puedes coger el poder. Dile que para ser el mejor hay que pelear contra los mejores. Y... Is, is it, to be the best, you have to be the best. Okay, well, let's bring in Sam Noakes at this point. Um, Sam Perez here is, is game. He's ready to go. I've, I've followed his Instagram, by the way. He's got a picture of your belt with the Big Ben. So he very much wants to come, he come here to London and beat you. Give us your thoughts. He said everything he said there is respectful and I'm going to keep it the same. I mean, obviously, I know what I'm up against. He's a tough fight his experience he's um obviously as you said 12 weeks of training obviously it would have been nice to get off get it on in september when it was first scheduled but obviously that's it. maybe their little game plan have a few more weeks but it's um i'm looking forward to getting in there having a good fight and yeah just keeping it respectful is always there uh he's he's lost to Corey gibbs he's lost to john o'carroll uh, are you looking to do a better job is this on your mind I always strive for success, Dev. You know me. I always try and do it better than everyone else. But I'm not seeing it as an easy, an easy fight. Or I mean, them two names are both good names over this way. So obviously he's a tested fighter. But we'll see Friday. Do you think this is one of those where it could go into the later rounds where you got to show you can carry that power late? Yeah, I'm, I'll be honest. I reckon it'll be later if it comes. I do because obviously as you said he's fit. He's trained. You've been following him. I'm going on this, you'll be probably liking his photos and all, Devin, yeah. Type of geezer he is, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it, as we all are. Everyone's up here, we're all ready. We've done all the, all the talk is nearly over, and then we can get to it. I saw you say something about taking frustration out on, on your next opponent. It looks yeah, like you carry next... on the way you're going, you'll get there. He'll be taken out on you, mate. <laughs> well, let's hope not, Sam. I, uh, I mean, his big old pot like that the whole time. <laughs> but uh, have you got some frustration to take out on... Carlos Perez. Well, yeah, not solely for him, but I'm obviously it's not been the, the most like exciting year for me. Obviously, I've only had one fight back in April and then the last one fell through. So, yeah, I'll probably say I've got a little bit there, Dev, and probably a little left over for you. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm ready to go any time. Ready to go. Anyway. You've got me in after, Definitely if you like. Um, You've heard him. He said it here first now. <laughs> He'll do it for the likes. He'll do it for the likes. <laughs> um, Carlos, tell me, have you, uh, have you, have you seen any flaws in, in Sam Noakes? Bueno, hemos visto todos sus combates, ¿no? Y hemos estado analizándolo con el equipo y, bueno, nada más que digo que, la, que el fanaticado venga a vernos porque se va a ver una buena pelea. He said, yeah, he, he, he has been watching a few fights of him. He says he knows a, a good fighter, but we are going to uh, have a, I call it a, a good performance. Sam, let me uh, let me let me tell you this. Obviously, I'm I'm friends with your mum on Facebook, and um, she's uh, <laughs> she's, hey, she's you're safe, Deb. Come no, on, no, I'm only joking. No, no, she's I'm just, only uh, joking. He's very good at his job. We love you, Deb. Don't worry about it, mate. Thank you. The, re the reason I, mean, I bring that up... I would never lay up, a hand on you this in a friendly way. Thank you. The reason I bring that up is that she, uh, she referred to Carlos Perez as a handsome chap. Does that give you an extra edge heading into Friday? Ah, not really. Of course, he's throwing me under the bus here. That's the return <laughs> serve there, isn't it? Well, I'll be going now. <laughs> no, uh, well, I ain't a bad looking geezer, are you? You're all right, mate. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what you want me to say to that, Deb, to be honest with you. Nah. Give us your uh, give us your fight prediction. Uh, he won't be as good looking afterwards as when he starts. 
Very good. Um, Carlos, just to get your final response to that, Sam Noakes says you won't be as good looking on Friday. Uh, what's your response to this and what's your fight prediction? He says, uh, after the fight, it's going to look even better. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> good response, good response. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, Sam. Um, let's, let's move on to the vacant EBU European Lightweight Championship on the line on Friday night. Gavin Gwynn and Emilio Marsili. Now, I'm going to start with Emilio Marsili here. Um, welcome. Emilio, uh, Emiliano, unbeaten in 43 fights here. What does this fight mean to you? Okay. <laughs> mi, sono, mi sono preparato bene so che è un match duro perché il mio avversario è giovane è ottimo io sono un po' vecchiarello però è una sfida che ho fatto con me stesso prima di ritirarmi volevo fare il mio sesto titolo europeo e riuscire a, a vincere anche quest'altro titolo europeo e ritirarmi in battuto Ok, well, Emiliano Marsili is indeed speaking in Italian. I'm hoping that there is an Italian speaker around here somewhere who can come and help. There may not be, but I would imagine uh, he predicts that he will be winning this fight. Uh, I, I was hoping to speak to him a little bit more, but let's bring in Gavin Gwynn here. Uh, Gavin, you are the British champ. Yeah. Uh, and now, just hours away from challenging for the European title. Life's pretty good. Yeah, soon to be European champion. Um, that's the title I wanted for a while now. Um, I've been out of the ring for seven months, so I just can't wait to get back in there Friday night and uh, do a demolition job on him. And, and what do you think of him? I mean, he, he's been around for, for years, but no one's been able to move him on. What do you think? Yeah, um, obviously he's half decent. He's, he's 42 and 0, um, 42 fights unbeaten. Um so he knows he knows the game inside out, but um, I think Father Time's going to catch up on him on Friday night because you know what I'm like in the ring. I'm ruthless. I won't let anyone off. Like so, come Friday night we'll have a new European champion come from Britain. But he's got power in that backhand. That's one thing for sure. I mean, look, the last time yeah. he he come on these shores, it was against Derry Matthews back yeah. in 2012, and, and he shocked the world then. The power, they say, is the last thing to leave a fighter. Yeah. You've got to be wary of that. Oh, 100%. Like, um, we've prepared all camp with bigger fighters, with welterweights. Um, but power done... My, my chin have never been questioned. Like, i got a good chin, so... He could hit me all night and I'd stand there laughing and just keep walking at him, throwing punches. That's the way I fight. <laughs> well, nobody's beaten him in 43 fights. There's no blueprint. There's no blueprint. I will Gavin. beat him on Friday night and I'll show you the bro uh, blueprint. But why are you so different to all the other fellas that thought they could beat him? I'm just so confident in myself and my ability. Um, my last couple of performances have been... Um, great, and I just feel so confident. Um, the last time I was in New York, all I beat a unbeaten southpaw. I think it was better fighter than Marcelli myself in Luke Willis. Um, I, his his technique was so much better than Marcelli's. Um, yeah, so that's that's given me the confidence, and obviously I beat another unbeaten southpaw in Sean McComb, who I think is better as well. So that's where I get my confidence from. What sort of fight are you expecting then on Friday? I'm I'm not expecting an easy fight. It's not going to be an easy fight. Um, I'm just expecting in, I reckon, eight, nine rounds, I'll get him up there. The Murtha Mexican, they're calling you? Yeah. Is it going to be that sort of performance? Yeah, definitely. I, I go there for the fight. I prepare for war. Um, if he am prepared for war, it's uh, going to be a long, all night for him. This, uh, if you pick up this European belt, it feels like it's a step closer to becoming a world champion. How does that sound? Yeah, like it's a massive achievement for me. It's the triple crown. I'll be the 11th person from Wales to win the um, Commonwealth, British and the EBU title. And um, it's a massive step up the ladder for the world title. And um, yeah, I just that's all i got to do is win on Friday night. And that's all I'm looking forward to is 
get in the wind on Friday night, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Gavin. Thank you, Emiliano. We're going to get some face-offs down the front here now very, very shortly. Uh, but until then, we will see you tomorrow at the weigh-in. Thank you. WBO European Super Bantamweight title on the line. Brad Strand and Joshua John, the unbeaten Brad Strand, 10 and 0. Really the step up for him at this point of in, in his career. He's been looking for a title shot. Joshua John comes with plenty of ambition, has also been looking for some sort of title himself and gets his chance live on TNT Sports on Friday night from British Boxing's spiritual home, of York Hall. They didn't have an awful lot to say about each other. There is a handshake there at the end as well. One of four title fights on Friday night. WBO European Super Bantamweight title on the line. Co-main event status, of course. The return of Gavin Gwynn, the British champion, taking on Emiliano Marsili. And Sam Noakes, the unbeaten Sam Noakes, takes on Carlos Perez. WBC International Featherweight Championship on the line here between Raven Chapman and Lucy Sedlakova. A fight that was scheduled to happen a few months ago. Sedlakova had to pull out, but now they will be getting it on on Friday. Very respectful chat at the presser. Both appear to have a secret on how to beat each other. We'll see if the secret is out on Friday night. Raven Chapman, of course, has that title very well ranked with the WBC. The champion, Amanda Serrano. Just in Sky Nicholson put in a great performance as well. That could well be a fight at some point between them two. Here is Sam Noakes, the cheeky chappy. <laughs> I've got Sean Noakes, his brother, in earshot, who... Uh, was less favourable uh, about what he said about Sam Noakes here. But uh, a, a very interesting fight here. Carlos Perez looks game, looks hungry, looks ready to go. And Sam Noakes has gone straight in with a handshake. Both spoke well at the presser. Ten rounds on Friday night. Co-main event status. WBC. <laughs> International silver lightweight title on the line. Now the other co-main event, again in the lightweight division. This is for the European title. A title that actually Emiliano Marsili there on the right of your screen held ten years ago. 
It is remarkable that he is still going, but no one's been able to get him out of the way. Gavin Gwynn, I mean, you can see from the size difference here, that is a six-foot lightweight, really boiling down from welter. Marsili looks to be the smaller man, but he has an awkward little southpaw with a hell of a backhand and unbeaten in 43 fights. Well, there will be a new European lightweight champion on Friday night. Will it be Gavin Gwynn? Will it be Emiliano Marsili? Let's bring in... Oh, no, no, we'll, 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 we'll get, both, get you both in. Get you both in. Let's get you both in. Oh, that's with your mama jokes. No, no, but there wasn't any of your yeah, mama joke. It wasn't. It was just a reference. No, 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 just no. no. It come after what I said. That was a return, that was. Do you reckon? I think it was <laughs> No, What's changed? Nothing, why, why are you nothing, so different? Nothing, I'm, I'm not, still the same. You, you, you've not. changed. I'm not. You was, you was trying to mug me off up there. Okay, well, we are live. I am here with Sam Noakes on one side and Sean Noakes on the other side. Gentlemen, um, enjoy the press conference. Yeah, it's good. Dev, it's nice to give you a little bit of stick. Yeah. You are normally the one with the old spoon. Yeah, I really the enjoyed the Yo Mama joke. <laughs> no, but there wasn't a Yo Mama joke. It was just a reference yeah, because, because I, I am you friends. You knew what you yeah, knew yeah, what yeah. you're doing. Listen, I am you friends. You ain't silly because you brought it up about the other one prior to that. Listen, I am friends with your mum, Sharon, on Facebook. She not does for say too much longer. Not much she's going to unfriend me now. <laughs> no, yeah. no, we're going to make her unfriend. <laughs> but look, look, she said he's a handsome chap, Carlos Perez. You've seen him up close now as well, and you, you said he's not going to be so handsome on Friday night. Yeah, well, that's the plan. Obviously, after a few punches to the head, no one's as pretty as they walk in there. But um, yeah, it's good. I enjoyed it. You know what? Normally, it's normally I can't be bothered to come up and do them, but I tell you, I had a good crack. Good. It's nice to see you sweat up there a little bit, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah, it's a bit twitchy, especially when that fella started speaking Italian. Oh, mate, look, they can't do that. They can't stick up an Italian speaker with no Italian translator. They can't, no. they can't do that to me. But uh, it looks an interesting fight. Um, you and Gavin Gwynn seem to get on very well, by the way. I, I was thinking of that as like a future fight. You, I see you liking each other's stuff on social media. You seem pretty pally. Yeah, but oh, as, as, is, I said, as I said, as I said, listen, I haven't got to be... Just because me and Gavin yeah. might fight in a year or so time, I mean, I've got to be nasty to Gavin. No. He's a good fella. Yeah, yeah, lose yeah, out yeah. on all the crack. And plus, he's... Uh, he's with me giving you stick. Yes, he so was. he's all for that. <laughs> so yes, he was. Go, Gav. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure. What, what do you make of uh, what do you make of this fight for, for your brother on Friday night? I think it's a good good return fight for him as well, especially with someone out of the ring. Um, plus, I say it's his blood dust cobwebs off, so I don't think he's a massive puncher, Perez. So I think he'll have it his own way, and then I, I believe it gets done four to six. Mm. I, I believe that he will be trickier than we think, just because he's on the back foot. He ain't going to want to engage too much. That's why I'm going to be... Well, you, prepare, you prepare for the worst, but I, I no, don't... prepare for the worst, but the thing is, it's all right to be in here saying, oh, I'm going to do it, mm. I'm going to knock him right out. But the thing <laughs> is, he's tricky, he's been in there a few times, and he's tough, mm. and he's fit. Tough and fitness is too better than skill. If they're skillful, all right, that dies out after the four rounds. But if you're tough and fit, that's a hard job. This is the first fight, I think, Sam, in your career, where a lot of people are talking about the next fight. Mm. They're talking about other stuff they're talking about Mark Chamberlain because Mark Chamberlain was talking yeah. about you last week um, how are you finding that heading into this where everyone's talking about um, the next fella listen it, I don't, it's not overshadowing it yeah, but obviously he's getting you buzzing but then obviously you're thinking about that and I think oh, I can't wait to smash his head <laughs> do you know what I mean but it's obviously I've got a job to do Friday I said like that's that's it any more Mark Chamberlain questions if you want to ask any questions ask me after on Friday and then I'll give you exactly what I think but at the minute I'm thinking just a Carlos Perez well, I'll ask you one more, just on Mark Chamberlain. <laughs> just, just what did you think of his performance last Friday? I'll tell you, Friday. Okay, <laughs> good, good answer. What did you think, Sean? I think because there's a few gaps in there. I think it, would, it, would if that performance be worth it against my brother? Not a chance. Mm. I don't think would he take the shots he took against uh, the fellow Friday against Sam against Sam? Not a chance. So, I think if to to beat my brother or even get close to beat my brother, I think he's got to show something a, a lot different than he's shown already. Cheers, cheers, Sean, mate. Fuck <laughs> I still think you're a mug. Love his <laughs> Love brother to me. As expected, we're going to swap you out for Gavin Gwynn. Good luck to you, 12 and 12 and 0, 12 knockouts. Friday Hopefully, Dev. <laughs> Good luck to you, Dev. Dev's hoping I'll, open, I'll get punched in the head loads now, ain't he? Mr. Gavin Gwynn. Um, How's it going? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, all good, but good. I just can't wait till we in tomorrow. That's the hard bit. And then uh, the fun bit is Friday night, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you are huge for a lightweight. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm massive. Like, like, and I'm, I make it quite comfortable. Like, I was a pound over this morning, like, so I'm eating and drinking. It's, but I, I'm, I'm super dedicated, and that's what it is, I think. I'm, 
I'm over there to get this done. I'm just like, Tony tells me to have days off and I'm like, oh, I'll, go, I'll go and do a run. <laughs> but it's, I think that's the way you've got to be and you've got to live the life as well. Like, and, that, and not cut any corners and that's that's what I do and I make that's how I make the weight, yeah. Mm -hmm. We couldn't understand what Emilio... No, I, no. <laughs> um, I mean, could you understand it? Did no, you, I was going to I was gonna try and... Uh, say something that he said but I was like nah nah <laughs> um, but, but you did get to face off with him you're yeah. so much bigger than him yeah. uh, what, what did you think but he's he's always fought uh, people bigger than him so I don't think that's going to be any difference but obviously on fight night I'm going to be a welterweight going back in there really so I don't think he's going to put that much back on he's quite short um, I think it will play a difference in the fight as well as when the rounds go a little bit longer, and um, I've always like sparred people bigger than me because it's harder. So it's, he's gonna find it ten times harder on fight night when I'm bulked up. <laughs> what did you make of his like energy up there? Yeah, he's just like it's any other fighter really. It's yeah. just no, there's no difference really, is it? You know nothing I mean? special. I no, nothing special. Like I, I have watched him. I've studied him a bit. Um, Obviously, he, he's no mug. Like it, it wouldn't be for the European title if it was, if it was a journeyman or whatever. But like he's unbeaten in 42 fights. He don't know what that feeling like is to lose. Um, I don't want to go back down there. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I I know I got that in the back of my mind as well. So that's why I put everything into training camps, everything into diet and uh, do you know what I mean? And that's why I give it up my all because I don't want to lose. Do you know what I mean? Home fighter. Home fighter, yeah, for once. <laughs> <laughs> it must feel good though, right? Like you've you've come with Queensbury now. Yeah. You're on TNT Sports. Yeah. Your, your co-main event on Friday night. Yeah. You've got that back in. It feels like a good time to be Gavin Gwynn. Yeah, it's massive for me, and um, that's why I got that bit of confidence in myself as well. Because I've always gone to the back garden to get these wins, and I've got the wins in the back garden as well. So, um, yeah, that's what gave me that bit of confidence, and obviously. That's all I gotta do is win this title and um, on Friday night and massive fights lay ahead in uh, next year. What's the key to you winning it? Is it is it just your youth and your sort of aggression? Is it you won't be able to last? What, what do you think? And not even that. I think I can outbox him. Like so, you might be you might see some boxing from uh, Gavin Gwynn on Friday night, but I don't know how long that'll last because they'll just they'll. Uh, they'll just let me off the leash and they'll let me at him. But uh, I am I am gonna box. Do you know what I mean? But if I want to put it on the gas, I can put it on the gas for 12 rounds. I know I can do that and throw three, 400 punches around and overwhelm him and get him out of there. But um, I think I can win both ways. I can win on the back foot. I can win going forward. So wherever I find comfortable, that's, that's what we're going to go with. we got a couple of different game plans I can go with and um, that's what we're going to do come fight night. Away from yourself, uh, yeah. Sam Noakes, of course, is on the yeah. show as well. He's been heavily linked with a fight with Mark Chamberlain, should yeah. he come through Carlos yeah. Perez. Can you give me your thoughts on that fight? Yeah, I, I just said um, to you and Sam up on there, I think Sam wins that fight. I think Mark takes too many shots, too many clean shots. So I think Sam wins that fight. Um, but it'd be a close fight and it'd be a good build-up as well. They're both, both punchers. Um, it'd be a massive fight for Britain, and not So, yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. We are very much looking forward to you on Friday night. And we'll the see new. You. Yeah, come on. And the new. Yes. yes. Good. We'll see you at the way in tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, Gavin Thank you. Gwyn. We're going to bring in uh, Brad Strand here. Does, okay. does Nick Ball want to come in as well? Come on, Nick. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on. Let's bring in. Let's bring in the ERT boys. Yes, How are we, gentlemen? Oh, um, big moment for for your man Brad Strand here, Nick. Right. Give me your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Big moment that he's ready for and what he's been waiting for now he's got it so he's going to uh, show what he's about Friday night great time in the gym right now Brad yeah the gym is buzzing obviously Nick last week me tonight and then the McGrails are fighting in a couple of weeks out in America mm -hmm. so we're flying time to get that first title is yeah, that is that sort of I've been asking for it for a while and obviously been a bit of a slow year but it'd be nice to finish the year on a high with my first title what did you make of Joshua John up there? You, you didn't have a lot to say about you. Whatever, you didn't, whatever he yeah. had, you dragged out of him. Like I've tried, it. mate. I've tried. <laughs> Nick, you, you've seen me at these pressers. I've tried everything I can. Good job, innit? Yeah. But what, yeah. What, did, what did you think? What did you make of him? You faced off with him now as well? Uh, yeah. There's not much you can take, I don't think, from them face offs. Like, you're going to be fighting him Friday regardless of what happens there anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know much about him, Dev. So, same here as up there. I haven't really got much to tell you. Uh, what would you make of this fight, Nick? 
don't really know like much about his opponent. I know a lot about Brad though, and um, yeah, I know that he's going to make a, a big statement on Friday, one that he's been waiting to do and, and show everyone what he's about, and he gets the chance to and get his first belt. Is this about the classy boxing on Friday for you? Yeah, definitely. Just w- whatever it takes, really. Like, don't know much about his style, and obviously, you never know until two fighters meet each other how it's going to go anyway. But like, I'm ready for anything, me. But hopefully, like, you know, I know I'll get the win on Friday, get that out the way, and then hopefully, some big fights for me in 2024. You know, just like Liam Davis, Dennis McCann, them names. Like, I want them fights, you know what I mean? So, this is just a little. Uh, just got to get through Friday and then look to 2024 then. So are you really telling me you studied no tape of Joshua John? I put it on and I turned it off after about 30 seconds. <laughs> this is what you do as well, yeah. isn't it? You just, just stick it on there. Nah, that's, that's, it, that's what we need to do. See a little, little glimpse or whatever you want to call it and then see them on the night. But in the gym, Paul's got you sitting down watching old tape, right? Yeah, Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. That's just something we, we have in our training. That's just something we go in every morning and do that. We study... The, the old fighters like obviously w- when we're fighting we've got our opponents our, us ourselves we won't, we won't study them but Paul might and then he'll work on it was with us in the gym but we just do what we've got to do best version of me is enough and I don't need to go Definitely. study someone else ok alright prediction uh, just Knock get win, whatever happens yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we let you go Nick what's happening with you just waiting, just um, yeah, just just waiting, just just boxed, haven't I? A week ago, so just waiting on some news now for the next one, probably next year now. Mandatory now though, so yeah, it's it's, it, it's it? coming, isn't it? It's there, isn't it? Just wait and be yeah. ready. Yeah, the champ, champ. For me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lovely speaking to both of you. Thank you very much. We'll fist bump. We'll fist bump. I'll take the mics. Thank you very much, Brad Strand. Okay, here we go. Ruston Barney Smith. How are we, sir? All good, Dev. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, so, another chance for you. End of the year, make a bit of a statement. It's, it feels like things are going well for Royston Barney Smith. No, everything's going well, well at the minute. Just ticking all the right boxes, doing all mm. the right things, doing everything what I need to do to catapult me into next year, and hopefully fight for a title in the beginning of 2024. But um, not looking past if I got a fight on Friday night and looking to do a good, a good job and a demolition job on it. You've um, have you have you moved away from home? Have you moved back home? I was I was hearing something about this in terms of your your camp setup. Tell, tell us. Um, so the thing what I've done now is say in be- why if I'm a few weeks or like away f- from the fight, I travel back home and travel back up. But the last two weeks, I like to stay in the camp. I like to stay in the gym. So that's where I've been been staying at the minute and it just helps me focus a little bit more get get locked in look what I need to do and it, and it helps with the performance all the way around OK so what we're expecting a demolition job on Friday you, you sound very confident heading into this one yeah for sure well I've done everything I needed to do in the gym I'm fit I'm strong I'm focused on what I need to be doing I know what I need to do on the night um, there won't be no excuses from me I'm going to do, do my best like always and that camp, that that Ben Davison gym, is uh, is quite something now. Even, even just like Alloys Junior, Lee Wood, guys like that, and of course now Anthony Joshua as well. It must be some buzz in that gym. Sure, everyone's on a winning streak. Everyone's on a high, and uh, I'm looking to maintain that and add fuel to the fire. Just keep getting everyone, like winners, keep on winning. And um, when you and it's a bit of competition in the gym it's like who's dropping off pace who's, who's getting better and, you, and you're looking around the gym and you're looking to, to show you're the one like you're the star in the gym and it's, it's a good environment to be around have you, have you been given any sort of advice any tips from AJ? Uh, yeah just by be, you're just saying keep focused make sure you're doing the right things don't drop off pace because if you drop off pace now it takes too long to get back where you need to be so just make sure you stay focused you tick over and you do all the right things Okay, good advice. Um, and how do you see him getting on in his fight, of course, coming up against Osso um, Valley? He's been looking good in the gym, and, and I feel like he's going to do a good job and uh, get another win underneath his belt and um, keep carrying on w- what he needs to do and could be a world champion. Okay, thank you, Royston Barney Smith. We look forward to your return on Friday. We're going to swap you out here for Joshua John. Sugar boy, Roy. Joshua John, um, how, how are you feeling? You've just had your, your press conference. I guess this is uh, probably, so far in your career, the biggest stage you've been on so far. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, of course, yes. So yeah. how how's, yeah. how's it feel up there? It feels good, yeah. Um, I feel confident, yeah. Yeah, it was all new. It was all, it was all new to me, yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, I feel good, and uh, I feel like I should be up there, yeah. He doesn't seem to know a lot about you. You don't seem to know a lot about him, or, or didn't say much about him as well. I don't need to well. know a lot about him at all, you know. Um, I've been in there with the best of the best in the amateurs. You know, I've boxed a few good people in, in the pros as well. I'm not worried about Brad uh, Friday night at all. Well, what's the key to you winning this fight, then? I'm just going to beat him up for ten rounds. That's it. Just beat him up. Have you have you seen in his fights so far? I'm, I guess you must have seen something, right? Or yeah, you, I've seen seen one of his fights. Um, well, uh, was it like his seventh fight against that uh, um, Ali guy? Something like that. I don't mm-hmm. know his name. But yeah, I watched a little bit of that. But yeah, yeah he's a good boxer. I'm not I'm not taking away, nothing away from Brad. He seems like a nice nice kid as well. But I'm not yet to be nice. You know, I'm yet just to win, and that's it. So you could be walking away with a WBO European title. Gavin Gwynn up there could be walking away with another European yeah, title as well. Us, yeah. it's, it's Wales in Europe, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> me, and, me and Gavin, you know, both stable mates. If we, uh, both of us can pull this off Friday night. Uh, it's going to be a big night in London for, for us Welsh. So your plan is to beat him up on Friday, just to confirm? Yeah, we're going to beat him up for 10 rounds. OK, that's the clip that I needed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joshua John. <laughs> okay. been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. And that concludes our press conference here today. Oh, it is bubbling up so nicely ahead of Friday Night Boxing live on TNT Sports. We're at British Boxing Spiritual Home of York Hall, the lightweight co-main events. Gavin Gwynn gets the chance to become the EBU European lightweight champion against the enigma that is Emiliano Marsili. He's 47 years old, but he's unbeaten in 20 years as a pro it's quite something we don't really know what to expect and Sam Noakes 11-0 and with 11 knockouts is looking to go 12-0 and with 12 knockouts against Carlos Perez so many other great fighters on the show including Royston Barney Smith Moses Itauma and so many more